Hi guys and welcome you to this delete where today we're talking about enzymes. Now there's a lot of enzymes, a lot of different enzymes that we use in distilling and in production of fermentations in our training, both the C1 introduction to distilling course and in the C10 uh, comprehensive distilling course. We go in depth in all the different enzymes that we use. Pectolyase enzyme which we use for um, converting pectin or breaking down pectin when you're working with fruit. Invitase enzyme which we use to break down uh, sucrose molecules into glucose and fructose molecules and so on and so forth. But in this video we're quickly going to talk about dextrolic and sugar leak. Dextrolic and sugar leak is the commercial product names for what we sell alpha amylase and glucoamylase enzymes and these enzymes are used during starch conversion. Now if you've ever done our W2 grain based spirits course either online or um, in-house you will remember that we use enzymes to break carbohydrates down to fermentable sugars. A carbohydrate molecule is a non-fermentable co uh, compound. We cannot use carbohydrates to produce alcohol. So when we're dealing with grain, when we're dealing with potatoes, when we're dealing with uh, um, cassava, sweet potato, any starch source, we need to go through starch conversion in order to break carbohydrates down to fermentable sugars. And we do that through enzymes. So I'm not going to go into the whole detail of it and so forth. All of that information is available in our training sessions. But the main thing to remember is that you need both enzymes. You need both the dextrolic and the sugar leak. The dextrolic is the alpha amylase enzyme. That's your first conversion to break the carbohydrates down to dextrins or complex sugars. The sugar leak is a glucoamylase enzyme. Actually, more, it's more mixture. There's a couple of different enzymes mixed in here together. And this breaks dextrins down to my fermentable sugars, my fructose and my glucose sugars, my simple sugars, which is what we use to produce ethanol during the fermentation process. Now, the dosages and temperature uh, treatments or temperatures required, as well as the durations of the treatments required, is on the instructions of the products, on their pages and on their labels. But quick and dirty, we use dextrolyte first between 80 and 85 degrees to give us our first conversion. The dosage is 0.4 milliliters per kilogram of grain used. So not based on the volume of the mash, but on based on the kilograms of grain used, or in the case of potatoes, or sweet potato, cassava, the kilograms of the starch containing raw material used, that, is, that determines the dosage. So 0.4 milliliters per kilogram. We add this in and we keep it between 80 and 85 degrees for a minimum of an hour if you use the minimum dosage. You can reduce the time period by overdosing, by adding in more of the enzyme. There is no flavor impact, there is no t um, aroma impact. It is purely a cost factor if you add in more enzymes. After you've done the first conversion, we uh, go uh, cool it down to 65 degrees and we add the sugar leak, the glucoamylase enzyme. Same dosage, 0.4 moles per kilogram of raw material, and we keep it for an hour again between 60 and 65 degrees. Now, those of you with a beer brewing background might be wondering what the hell am I talking about here? This is completely too high temperatures, the order is wrong, and so on and so forth. If you want some clarity on that, do a W2 grain-based spirits training, and you'll see why we do the starch conversion differently for, start, uh, for distillation fermentation than we do for a beer fermentation.